Karen has an extremely successful children's app um, that she developed, and I'll, I'll let her talk a little about it. But before I turn it over to Karen, one of the most important things that we discovered uh, very quickly, um, the app world, everyone knows there's a ton of apps out there. But when I say a ton of apps, there is a ton of apps out there. And if you're going to create an app and throw it in the app store and hope that it's uh, successful, um, you're probably going to be disappointed. So if all you're going to do is spend the time and effort to build your app and you know, maybe just throw something on a web page and uh, hope that the iTunes Apple App Store will be your savior, um, it's not going to be. Uh, and we've spent a lot of money on marketing certain apps, and you know we're still novices when it comes to marketing. But all I can tell you is that marketing is the most important part of being successful if you do intend to make money in this business. And Karen has written a couple of books, and she gives uh, seminars, and she's just a wealth of information. And tonight, she, I told her, you know, to keep it, you know, to just 15 minutes, and and 15 minutes don't do any justice to what what she what her knowledge is. But I think you'll get a, a really good feel for, um, you know, a, a good idea of what successful marketing is all about. And you'll probably want to learn a lot more from her. Um, so we'll make sure to share all of the links to her web pages. And with that said, uh, Karen. Um, you should see on your left side where it says uh, screen share. So if you want to try to share your slides. Um, OK, let me do yeah. that now. Like I said, I'm a, a complete neophyte on Yeah, that. if it doesn't work, I, I can grab your slides real quick. OK, so select a window to show. OK, I'm going to do full screen. Yes. All right. That's a cool map you got behind you. Oh, yep, the world. <laughs> um, it's better than the disgusting beigey color that the it shows up like pea green when I'm back there. Can you see anything yet? Yes, we, we can, can see nope. your screen. Yeah. Oh, so you can see my slides? We yeah. can. Yay. Yeah. Just, All right. Just, yeah. If I make it bigger, is this better? Go to the slideshow. Wait, let me know if this it. is better or not. Okay. Well, that's what I just tried to want. Okay. Oh, okay. Hold on. There's a little lag between what we we're seeing and what you're seeing. Oh, here we go. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There. Can you see it? Well, we're looking at your yes? your kind of your PowerPoint. Yeah. Not yep. this. Not, yeah. Great. Okay, and you can hear me, so I can get started. Absolutely. Sure. Okay, great. And thank you All for right, joining so, us. All right. So, um, the way I decide, okay, because. Sure. Look, I'm thrilled to be here. And, you know, when it comes to creating and um, putting your, your book apps or your children's apps, any type of app out there, there are really two main parts of the process. The first one's the creative part, and we put so much time and energy in that. And then you turn around, and it's the marketing part is, is just a whole lot of work on top of the production. And Ezra nailed it when he said, you know, if you think you're just going to create something and put it in the app store, you know, and you think you're going to sell a bunch of apps, it unfortunately just doesn't work that way. So what I want to do is kind of give seven insider tips, I'm calling them, on marketing apps for kids. And I'm going to do that in 15 minutes. So I'm just going to go down now. Uh, first of all, I have two book apps that I have written and created. They are in the Treasure Kai series. The first one, the one on the left, I launched in February 2011. The second one, the sequel, I launched in October 2012, so almost a year ago. We have sold at least one Treasure Kai app every single day for the last two and a half years. And that is, I think, remarkable um, when I consider, you know, some days, you know, I don't do much of anything. In fact, many days I don't do much of anything on marketing, but it's because of the things that I've built up. So what I want to do now is just kind of take you through these seven insider tips. Also, Ezra did mention, I have written a number of books about writing and creating book apps. So my website is digitalkidsauthor.com, so you can find more links there, and I think Ezra's going to share them. 
So the first thing I wanted to say before I get into these seven tips is I want to talk just very briefly about how marketing a kid's book app or a kid's app is different from marketing other types of apps. Um, because there is there are some really big differences, especially now that there are new COPA rules out, which is the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. I'm going to talk about that in just a few minutes, very briefly. But essentially, the reviewers that we have to work with in the kids space and that space different from the general app reviewers, um, because you can have your apps reviewed by general app reviewers, but also you've got specialist children's app reviewers and even book app reviewers that you have in your arsenal as well. Also, the types of bloggers that you will target with your messaging are different because you can target parenting and mommy bloggers. The publications who are going to be interested in your apps are going to be different, and the types of promotions that we do are different. And this is a really important one because best practice right now when it comes to selling most apps like game apps or utility apps, um, to monetize those you use ads or you use a freemium model where you offer the app for free and then you upsell different content or activity using in-app purchase. And that is getting harder and harder to do in the children's app space and also is going against best practice in the children's space. So I just wanted to mention those things up front. But let's go ahead and get into some insider tips. The first one is so important. It's a marathon, not a sprint. And actually, it's across country because there are a lot of bumps in the road when you are marketing an app. And I have someone who has been following my newsletters and books and things for the last two years. She's been working on her app, and she just launched hers on Monday. And she wrote to me, and she was just devastated because, you know, she said she, she expected more downloads already in the first three days. And, you know, I tried to explain to her that I remember what this was like when my app, I first launched my first one. I was exhausted. I was emailing the reviewers, and I was doing all this different work. And, you know, what I've learned about this is that it, it just takes time to build this. And rarely are you going to do a marketing campaign or something with marketing where you're just going to knock it out of the park. This is a build, the marketing effort. But just remember that. Don't expect to do everything all at once. The second thing is that quality is everything, but it's not the only thing. And so you have to create a great quality app in order for there to be any hope or chance of it being reviewed or creating buzz around it or anything like that. But quality oh, means absolutely I'm, nothing. I'm not sure if the um, screens are uploading. Um, if the yeah, like your screen might be yeah. paused. Karen, yeah. are you working on two screens there? Where one's showing the slideshow? Oh, I, I do have two screens going. Okay, so the only screen we're seeing is the one where we, we see the whole PowerPoint. That's, you know, not the full screen slide, but the actual PowerPoint. Like the dashboard? The dashboard, yeah. So we see the slide within PowerPoint, but it's still showing the first slide. Oh, that's weird. I'm not seeing that at all. I wonder what I do about that. Can you, in, can you go to your PowerPoint itself and just change your slides? Manually? Manually? Well, yeah, that's what I was doing. I was in PowerPoint paging down. Yeah, now yeah, we saw you page talking. down. Yeah, now you're in page now, now you're moving through the page, yeah. Is that better? Yes. Is that better? That's yes. better. Yay! Okay, so Yay. I had it in um, presentation mode. Okay, that's, okay. Better. Okay. that's Just, better. That's working good now. Thank you for letting me know, because I, I didn't know. I thought I had this beautiful presentation mode going. I was really excited. It, that's <laughs> interesting. We All right. Yeah. So the quality is everything. Yeah, the quality is everything that, thing then. Um, for that, what is so important is that it doesn't matter how great your app is. There are some awesome apps just lying dormant in the app store that no one knows about because they're not being marketed. And there's some kind of average apps that sell well because they are being marketed. So marketing is really important. If you're going to have any hope in it, you've got to have a great quality app. So the next thing I wanted to talk about, this is super important, is to start connecting with people early. And this is all about pre-marketing your app and connecting with people, reviewers, and other colleagues in the app community. So I actually wrote a blog post about this at digitalkidsauthor.com forward slash pre-marketing, and I've got pre-marketing as one word. I suggest you read that because it's an example of a woman who did a great job of pre-marketing her app. So for the nine months prior to her app launching, she was out meeting people, connecting people, 
the reviewers knew her, so when so a lot of people knew this app was coming. So when she launched, they were all ready to buy it. So she wasn't starting from nowhere. Whereas this other student that I talked to this week, she had done nothing, and then all of a sudden she just went, ta-da, here's my app. And no one knew her or really cared because they didn't have a relationship with her. And you know, this connection thing is really important. It's one of the, the biggest success factors I've had when it comes to marketing is that I have spent the time over the last two years or two and a half years building relationships with reviewers but also other colleagues who make and create book apps. And so we support each other. We support each other's promotions. We share each other's promotions and things on social media. And so that's really important. And so you might be wondering how you connect with people. Some, a few ways you can are um, via the Parents with Apps and Moms with Apps sites. There's a Facebook group developer exchange, which is a great place to do it. And there are also a number of LinkedIn groups. And there's one other thing that I don't have on the slide here because it's not live yet. But I've actually co-founded a new industry organization called the Book App Alliance. And it is an industry organization of innovative authors of interactive books for kids. And so it is going to be, it's designed to be a community that will do two things. One, educate the market about book apps, but also to help us come together as one voice to be able to promote great quality apps. So it gives us a chance as individual authors and illustrators to compete with the likes of Disney Dora and Dr. Seuss. So this community idea and connecting with people early is important. Even if you don't have an app yet, it's okay to do that. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is understanding your platform. And what's it's not up I think it's not updating again. Um, that it is just weird. did. Oh, yeah, we, we're seeing it, oh, Nina. Oh, it is, just okay. slide four. Oh, okay. Okay. Can you see it? Keep, keep talking, yeah. I'm, I'm keep seeing watching. page six. I'm on page nine now. Oh, okay, it might be mine. Um, yeah, we see we see page nine here. Okay, okay. Cool. <laughs> Do you okay. see page nine? <laughs> yes, yeah, we're on nine. Well, and the good news is I'm happy to share these slides, and also there's not there aren't that many words on them. <laughs> yeah, so that's good. So the thing about your platform, is most people say, what does that mean? And it, it's the same concept as when you market an app as it is when you market a book, is that it's never about your app. It's about what your app can do for the user, and that's what your marketing messaging needs to be about. So, you know, it's how does your your user use your app, what benefit does it deliver, and that sort of thing. And let me just give you give you an example of that. So Cindy Seaburn is a national board certified teacher, and she created an app uh, called Smarty Bridges Nouns, and it was a story app that taught about nouns. And that was, you know, a really neat aspect of her app. And so when she goes out and she talks about her app, she talks about uh, nouns, for one thing, but she also talks about the South, because she's from Arkansas, and this app celebrates the South. So those are two different ways that she has platforms. One is about the South, the other is about kind of good grammar. But the other thing she did was, because she's a National Board Certified Teacher, she's really passionate about how book apps are used within the classroom and developing curriculum activities that, that teachers can use in the classroom. And so what we did for her was we actually established her as an opinion leader. She created a website called Apps with Curriculum, and she even develops curriculum activities for multiple people's book apps and um, educational game apps. So she has kind of created this uh, opinion leader status for herself, and so that helps promote her apps. So you see, it's not that she goes out and she goes, I've got an app, buy it. She goes out and she talks about how apps are used in the classroom, how apps are used for teaching grammar, and how um, apps can teach about the South. So that's that. All right, another insider tip, number five, is to use what the App Store gives you. So the App Store does give you a number of tools, things like, uh, how you name your app, what description you use, your keywords, your icon, and also which screenshots you choose. So just use those things really wisely because they're free. The interesting thing that I, I just did an update, a major update of, of the ebook that I wrote about marketing book apps, and um, Apple had changed its criteria for some of these different things like app names and descriptions. So it's really important that you always you know, reference that, but do use those things well 
be sure you choose your keywords well, be sure you choose your screenshots well, and also one of the tricks that I'm seeing with screenshots, I'll just give you a little tip that I like, is people are putting little messages on top of their screenshots, like if they win an award, they'll say something about an award there or something that's unique about the app. The sixth insider tip that I'll give you is, is that many of the best marketing tactics are free, but they're going to take up your time. So I actually have a 20-year background in marketing. So I was a marketing specialist before I started writing and creating apps. And in many ways, that's been invaluable, and many ways, that's been useless. The way it's been invaluable <laughs> is that I've spent a lot of time testing things. I've tested paid advertising, paid advertorials. I've done PR. I've done banner ads, so many different things. I have spent the money so you, you don't have to. Um, and what I've learned is that really you are just not going to get a return on investment on just about any, any type of paid advertising you're getting with apps. So most of the effort that you need to make are around your free techniques. And I've got a list of those here. So one, of course, is, is using what the App Store gives you. But it's also things like using social media. So participating and having conversations around Facebook, LinkedIn, um, you know, Twitter to some degree, having price sales. Um, participating in a thing called App Friday. So App Friday is a weekly event where apps are put on sale. And there are a lot of review sites, children's review sites, that come together and promote them. And there's a Facebook party. And App Friday is a free tool that you have to use. Also, reviews are another free way to market your app. Now, one thing I want to say about reviews very quickly is that a lot of people put their hopes and dreams in getting a good review, and they think they're going to get a lot of downloads from a review. First of all, reviewers are so inundated now with requests that it can take a very long time to get a review. So you can expect like a six-month to a year wait on getting a review, often unless there's something really special about your app and there's a lot of buzz about it. But the other thing is that reviews are really all about credibility and giving you talking points about your app and giving you things to add to your app description they're not going to uh, result in a huge bump in your sales necessarily. So don't you know, hang all of your hopes on reviews, but they are worthwhile getting. And then PR is public relations, so that's issuing press releases. And there's um, you know, a number of different ways to distribute your press releases. Some cost just a little bit of money, or others you can just send your press releases out uh, to journalists directly. But, you know, you try to create news stories around your app. And an example of that is that Treasure Kai and the Lost Gold of Shark Island, uh, there has this, a heavy shark theme in that particular app. And so one of the things that I did was I worked with a number of other uh, app creators who wrote, who created children's oriented apps, educational book apps and game apps that had shark themes. And then when it was Shark Week, do you remember Discovery Channel Shark Week? We created a press release around apps for Shark Week. And so that got picked up in a number of different places and created a little bit of buzz. And so that didn't cost me anything to do that press release. And it was a themed, relevant press release around the app. But it wasn't just about my app. It was around the theme. All right. So the seventh thing I just wanted to mention as an insider tip is that there's this thing called COPA, which is the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. And it came into effect in July. And essentially what it is saying is that you have to have your privacy policy on your website and you have to have a link to it in your app description. So that's what COPA was saying. And it also is talking about how you use and collect data within your app. Now the reason I'm mentioning I mentioned this very dry, awful topic is that Apple just changed the goalposts on us. So Apple has taken the COPA rules and they've um, tightened them. And so they've changed their, their app review guidelines to be stricter than what COPA was requiring. So what that means is there are people who have apps that are in the app store who have issued minor updates to their app, and now all of a sudden they're getting rejected by Apple because they're not um, now you know, adhering to these new rules. And what these new rules include are little things like, and I've written a, a blog post about this, by the way. It's, you can access it from my homepage. But um, it's things like the privacy policy now has to be within the app itself. And the other thing that is is very frustrating is that if you have any link within your app 
that take a child outside the app, like for example, if you have a link to a more apps page or something like that, that now has to be behind a parent gate where you can buy someone to access that content. So you can no longer have you know, a link to a video within your app and have it approved by Apple if you do an update. So I just wanted to mention it because this has been a really rude surprise for a lot of app developers who have been a long time and now they're getting their updates rejected. Okay, so the last thing I'll say is that um, I do have a book that I've written about marketing children's apps and book apps. It's called Cut Through and Drive Downloads, How to Market a Book App, and you can access it through digitalkidsauthor.com. And that book is about 150 pages, and it talks all about you know, different aspects of marketing, paid marketing, free marketing, different things that we've tried, um, tested, so you don't have to waste your money, the things we've done that have worked real well, and that sort of thing. So that's my 15 minutes on marketing. Uh, Karen, can you mention about the, the end? The, the end. That was that was great. We all enjoyed that very much. But it's not the end because we got a couple questions. Well, can you mention uh, digital app sales versus Kindle children's ebook sales? What kind of comparisons are we seeing, or what's the what's yes the delta? Okay. Yeah, this is a topic that I'm really interested in because right now my apps are only available through Apple, and they're available for the iPad and the iPhone. Um, and they're only available as apps. I have not published them as ebooks. The reason I have not expanded into Android and the reason I have not published them as ebook is I've been talking to colleagues for the past two years who have been doing so, and they say unequivocally they get most of their downloads from Apple App Store, hmm. not from iBooks, not as ebooks not you know on Kindle, not on Nook, not on Android devices. It's just by far and away more sales and downloads from the Apple App Store. So if one of your objectives is that you actually want to sell your app, then uh, my recommendation is always to go Apple first. And if it's easy to create an Android version, great, and it's to go app versus ebook. Now the exception to that is if you are doing a heavy text uh, driven book, so a book that you know, like a, a young adult novel or something like that, or even an adult book that's got video content or things. Then you would go ebook. So when I'm talking about the power of apps in children's content, I'm really talking about illustrated picture books and illustrated children's books, graphic novels, comics, that sort of thing. Okay. Second question, and this is for me again. This is for Ezra and you both. And Ina too, and Ken. What, so, what do you see apps doing in the world of education? Like we just saw Professor Reed with his students at Rice, and they're bringing something into the sixth grade as a, using apps as a teaching tool, using Interact Builder as a teaching tool. Do you see this being the new one of the big new applications for for children's apps? And how far away um, is it? Do you want me to? I'd love yeah. To do you want me to answer that? Answer. I mean, what I'm yeah, well, I'll just do a quick comment. Is We're definitely seeing um, it's being used in the classroom. I probably at least once a week see a series. You can tell the group downloads when they happen from a school because of how many of them are happening. So, yeah, we're definitely seeing that. And then my son's school has a one-to-one -one iPad program. So every child in the school yeah. has an iPad and they use it as a learning tool. Like, yeah. It's definitely a hot trend. Anybody else want to comment on that? No, I mean, I think Karen said it spot on. You know, education is definitely one of the growing uh, areas that I think uh, it would benefit uh, anyone who's interested in creating apps should, should look at. Um, there is a tremendous push right now, uh, you know, to, to use uh, more technology in the classroom uh, all yeah. across the country. Uh, Los Angeles is the first city, you know, with uh, you know purchasing iPads. Uh, Amazon is making a huge commitment to focus on the educational market. Google is going is making a huge push in the textbook market place. Um, so it, it, it goes.
goes you know far and deeper than uh, you know than just uh, what Apple's doing out there. And it's definitely an area where you know I think there's more content is, is absolutely needed as uh, you know and really good educational uh, apps. 